everyone, I'm Teacher Jen from Think Teach Academy and today in science we will be focusing on the water cycle. Do you recall a natural event that took place on New Year's Day this year in Singapore? Let me give you a clue. Yes, we experienced extremely high rainfall this year on New Year's Day. And I still recall that the rain actually lasted for many, many hours. In the year 2010, flash floods happened in certain parts of Singapore, just like the one in Orchard Road. And our government had to spend millions and billions of dollars to improve our drainage system. And guess what? This year, we experienced the highest rainfall in the past 39 years. Can you believe that? And you guessed it right, flooding happened again in Singapore. Check this video out. So what are the two causes of high rainfall in Singapore? The first cause is known as the Sumatra Squalls. So the Sumatra Squalls is an organized line of thunderstorms that originated over the Straits of Malacca. And these thunderstorms move from the west down to the east. And how they move is with the help of the westerly winds. So the westerly winds are really strong gusts of wind that blow these thunderstorms from the west down to the east. So this is where Singapore is located. The second cause of the heavy rainfall is the strong daytime heating of the Earth's surface, which leads on to the water cycle which is our main focus for this video. So to tackle your science exam question on this topic, it is very, very important that you have a deep understanding of how the water cycle works, which I will be discussing about the whole water cycle today. So first, for water cycle to begin, right, we always need the water bodies, all right? So, examples of water bodies are things like the seas, your rivers, your oceans, and even your lakes. Now, in the water cycle, there are two heat processes that take place. One is evaporation, the second one is condensation. Now, in your science question, remember this, okay? Before we mention the heat process, you need to always write down the heat transfer first. So the heat transfer is basically gain heat or lose heat. So evaporation, we know that it is a gain heat. Condensation is lose heat. So for example, if let's say there is a puddle of water on the floor, alright? And the question is what's going to happen to the puddle of water after a few hours? We know that the water will evaporate, right? But to get your full marks, again, the heat transfer must be written down first. So the correct way to write this down is the puddle of water will gain heat from the sun or from the warmer surrounding air and evaporate to form water vapor. So water vapor is in glacial state, right? And you cannot see water vapor. So now back to the water cycle. So after we have the water bodies, alright, there are two heat processes that will take place as mentioned, right? Evaporation and condensation. So in this case, what happens is the water in the water bodies will gain heat from the scorching sun or from the warmer surrounding air and evaporate to form your water vapor, which is in gaseous state. Now, the warmer water vapor is going to rise, right? Because hot air rises. So when the warmer water vapor rises, it will come into contact with the cooler surrounding air. So once it comes into contact with it, it will lose heat to the cooler surrounding air and condense to form your tiny, tiny water droplets, which will gather to form clouds, right? 
So remember, clouds is always in liquid state, alright? It is not in gaseous state. So clouds are made of tiny, tiny water droplets. Now, when there is too much water droplets forming and your clouds become heavier, what happens is now it will fall less rain, right? And the rain will fall back to the water bodies and that's where the whole cycle repeats itself. Now, let's say the temperature of the surrounding air is higher than usual. So today's weather is extremely hot. What would happen to the water cycle? So the water cycle would actually speed up, okay? So what happens is your evaporation, your condensation takes place faster. You're going to have more water droplets forming. Your clouds will be heavier. And that's where you get your high, high rainfall. And who knows, Singapore might experience flooding again. I hope you have a better understanding of the water cycle. Do check out part 2 of this video as I will be focusing on an exam question on this topic. I'll see you there. In the meantime, have a great week. Bye-bye.